H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So, well input is there. Fine. So, let us run this program. Okay, we will see all these statistics with combiner and without combiner. These will change because the network traffic is going to be reduced, right? So, where is my combiner? Okay. It is going to give all the output. So, the output is as good as my regular WordCon program itself, right? So, I haven't declared any combiner in this program and definitely it will be same as my word count output itself. Now, let us run with combiner. right so everyone agrees with this So now if you observe here, for example if you take the upper one, the amount of CPU time that was spent is 2270 milliseconds, right? But here if you see the amount of CPU time, the amount of CPU time spent is only 2000 milliseconds right so 270 milliseconds have been reduced by using my combiner and also the number of map input bytes and all those things will also change hmm. these few things will also change here but the major thing you can concentrate is CPU time spent by that you can understand that how much amount have been decreased on your program network okay okay so 
the output is as well and as same as your combiner one so do you agree that so you are not going to change your output in the sense the output even with your reducer or without your reducer should be same and it should be a cumulative function anytime if you are going to apply your combiner then only your combiner is going to work so all good or any questions on this combiner can I go ahead come on guys I'm not getting any answers okay okay so let us go back to our PPT again now you all are very well aware of mappers, reducers, combiners and partitioners right so let me ask you a question so here I had written one logic and you have to tell me that okay uh, before that there are four errors in the whole slide okay in the whole functionality there are four errors you have to tell me like what are the four errors you are seeing in this particular slide if you can identify all those things I am sure that you are very good till now on MapReduce. <laughs> Come on guys, I will give you 5 minutes time. I want some quick answers, okay? Partitioner is missing. Okay, Rahul is saying that partitioner is missing. Uh, Rahul, it's not mandatory, right, to give a partitioner. It's up to me whether I want to give a partitioner or not. So, partitioner is not a mandatory phase. And Nisha is giving the mapper output from mapper 1 should be only key values, not key comma value list. Uh, Nisha, if you see the mapper output here, it is generating high comma one, how comma one, or comma one, and u comma one from your map program, right? So it is key comma value only. It's not key comma value list. Okay. Uh, let me unmute you all for a while so that it will be easy for you to speak. Okay, Arjun is saying, okay, Nisha, it should be how comma one. So that is what it has given, right, Nisha? If you observe your map output, it is how comma one only. So are you trying to convey something else? It should, but it's showing as how comma one comma one. No, see my map output here. So this is what my map output is. So just see my cursor. This is my map output, right? Mm -hmm. 
so isn't it how come a one no but the next one like so there are different phases in between right oh okay okay arjun is giving something output of shuffle and sort is not in sorted order perfect i got one good answer right output of shuffle and sort is not in sorted order so if you see the output of shuffle and sort here i am getting first key value as high comma 1 and next key comma values as high comma 1 comma 1 and the last key comma value as or comma 1 comma 1 but the actual output should be as R comma one comma one and I comma one and how comma one comma one, so that is how after sorting phase happens, right? So good, Arjun, you got my answer. Oh, very good. Akshay has given one more answer: two shuffle and sort not one. Perfect. There should be two shuffle and two sort phases, right? So, if you remember this one, x mappers, x combiners, x partitioners, y shuffle and y sort. So, two reducers are there. So, there should be two shuffle and two sort phases. So, well and good. I had, I got two answers. So, two more are left. Oh, good, good, good. Again, Akshay had given two reduce output. Perfect, perfect man. You are playing like we're <laughs> actually <laughs> correct. There should be two reducer outputs. So for each of the reducer, there should be some output file, right? But here, if you see, it is a clubbed output file. So that is what the another wrong notation I had given in this diagram. So output is not sorted. Okay, that is anyways that is there. We got that answer. Output is not sorted at any phase. That is fine. So I got finally three answers and one more answer. I am trying to get. Man, come on, man! You are <laughs> superb. Akshay is telling splits, so there is an issue with splits. Can anyone answer me? Okay, just hold on, Akshay. I want to listen from other guys as well. But you are perfect. So, what is the issue with splits here? I want Rahul, Nisha, and Arjun. to try on it yes two blocks or two splits are needed so each split will be an input to each map right so it should be like maybe hi how are you should go to one map and how are you doing should go to another map program or maybe hi how are you how are you doing should go to map program 1 and there should be some other input split that is going to another map program so that is how it needs to be so perfect you all are good and you are all doing good job no issues at all with map reduce so guys that is what about partitioners combiners mappers and reducers okay So let's go to the next topic. Speculative execution. Mm -hmm. 
One problem with the Hadoop system is that by dividing the task across many nodes, it is possible for a few slow nodes to rate limit the rest of the program. So let's understand this point. Okay. So suppose you are having a thousand node cluster and there are thousand map programs that were running on each of your cluster. Okay. So you are having different configurations on each of your node cluster, right? And maybe you are using different con uh, different setups for your machines. Maybe one machine will have 1 GB and second machine will have some 5 GB of hard disks or something like that. So the configurations will be different on each of your node, right? So that is what our commodity hardware talks about. So it might be different based on your requirements or based on how you are getting your machines or how you are going to buy your machines. So each machine will definitely give a different performance, right? So suppose I am running 1000 map functions on 1000 nodes, maybe one map function might get a small input split and maybe the machine is very fast and that's the reason it will run your program maybe in 10 milliseconds and for the second map function maybe it's your bad luck or a bad day and you are going to have a big input split and your machine has less capability then definitely it's going to take some more time when compared to your first machine right so what happens is until all the map phases are executed all task trackers needs to wait for that so before I want to start my reduce function I should get all my map outputs one second guys okay good So what I am telling, yeah, before the reducer phase or maybe before the partitioner phase or combiner phase starts, all your map programs should be executed and done. So all this phase should be finished first before going into the second phase. So all these outputs, all these outputs should be generated before going to combiners. But as my current setups and my node functionalities maybe one mapper will generate the output fastly and another mapper may generate the output slowly right so if at all my mapper one is going to take lot much of time maybe it's taking thousand milliseconds and maybe my mapper two mapper three mapper four and mapper five each is taking 200 milliseconds so each of these four nodes should wait for more than 800 milliseconds to get started to work on this combiner phase right so that's where we are seeing one lagging or one problem in your ecosystem so that's what the second point says save input will be processed one second guys are you able to hear me Yeah, yeah. Guys, are you able to hear me? Hello? 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 Are you able to hear me, guys? Okay, cool. Okay, so same input will be processed multiple times in parallel to exploit differences in machine capabilities. So as we are having different capabilities on each of the machine, what we are going to do is the same input split will be executed 
on multiple places so suppose I have a map function maybe map1 and this map function rather than executing on a single task tracker I would be running the same map function on multiple task trackers simultaneously or parallelly so what we will do is uh, the first machine is very fast and it has it is done with its okay let me go into this so first machine is very fast and it is able to finish its program very quickly okay so now it will be idle until all remaining machines are done with their map phases right so what our framework will do is it will assign all the remaining map phases that are being executing right now to the first machine also so imagine that there are five machines machine machine 2 machine 3 machine 4 and machine 5 so each was given a task initially my task tracker has given like this map 2 map 3 and map 4 map 5 so as my first machine is very fast it has executed its map function that is map 1 so quickly when compared to machine 2, 3, 4 and 5 so what my job tracker or my framework will do is it will assign the map 2 function map 3 function, map 4 function and map 5 functions 3, 4 and 5 so my framework will assign map 2, map 3, map 4 and map 5 functions to machine 1 as and when map 1 function is finished and it will see like which machine will give the output of map 2 quickly so if at all machine 2 will use the map 2 function before machine 1 it will take the output of map 2 from machine 2 and it will decommission the map 2 function that is running on machine 1 so it will just close the function that is running on machine 1 as because it got the output before machine 1 has executed it and the same way if map 3 function that is running on map 3 is running slowly and map 1 function I had given the output from map machine 1 then it will quit this map 3 execution process and take the output from map machine 1 itself so whatever machine that runs fastly it will take the output from that machine so that is what the exact speculation speculative function talks about Okay. Hadoop platform will schedule redundant copies of the remaining tasks across several nodes which is called as speculative execution. So as tasks run in isolation modes no problem in giving the same map function parallelly right because machine uh, suppose there is one task that is running on machine 1 task 1 maybe task 2 on machine 2 task 3 on machine 3 and so on so forth okay so task 2 is not aware of what task 1 is doing so it will be running in isolated mode and it will the only function of this task tracker is okay there is one input that is given to me blindly I have to execute it and give the output I am not or I don't mind about different machines or other machines my just task is to run whatever that is given to me as input so as each machine is working on isolation mode there will be no problem in giving the same map function parallelly so whichever copy of a task finishes that becomes the actual output and all the remaining map functions will be decommissioned so Hadoop tells all others to stop this job once done by any task tracker and discard their remaining outputs 
so speculative execution is enabled by default you can disable speculative execution for the mappers and reducers by setting these two values in your configuration sites so you don't need to or bother to do the speculative function manually by default as and when when you install your Hadoop cluster this function will get enabled and if at all you want to disable it then only you have to go and manually set these two values to false that is mapred.map.task.speculative.execution to false and mapred.reduce.task.speculative.execution to false then only each machine will take care of their outputs but not the tasks will be processed multiple times in parallel so that's what the speculative function talks about so any questions on the speculative execution guys Can I go ahead? Any okays or no's or okay, good. Fine. So I will try to start one more topic and try to work on it or try to just get some information on it by tomorrow's class, okay? So I will just give you a scenario and let me know like what is the best ways or what are the possible ways that you can work on it. Okay. And I will talk about that topic tomorrow. Let's take an example. You are managing thousand node cluster maybe you are a admin or developer don't mind don't worry about it so whatever you might whatever your role might be you don't worry about that your company you have a company just imagine okay your company is to send a mass SMS for campaigns so you are trying to conduct a campaign and you have to send some SMS's okay so in your Hadoop cluster you have all the mobile customers list okay each guy or person okay but the government regulation says if a subscriber has opted for DND &D, which is do not disturb mode we all are aware of this mode right do not disturb mode for maybe Verizon calls or AT&T calls we will not like to lift or pick up those calls right so definitely we will call, block it or maybe we will call to that uh, service customer service itself and we will make them to do not disturb modes such that we will not get any calls from Verizon or AT&T right and that person should not get the SMS once he opt for a do not disturb mode so basically I have a list of subscribers 
and SMS list and the DND is more like a lookup data. So what is lookup data? So lookup data is nothing but it is going to be changed very frequently. So maybe today for today if you think like there are 10 customers who opted for do not disturb mode by tomorrow there may be 15 customers who opted for do not disturb mode. So every customer is getting vexed over with these calls and he might be opted day by day. So the customers will change for opting this do not disturb modes right. So my lookup data is going to be changed day by day. So do not disturb mode list gets updated frequently. So my question is how, how do I make sure that I give this lookup data to all my thousand machines before every new run of my MapReduce program. Okay, you got my question guys? Or on a very high level of the question this question I have a lookup data file which changes every one day maybe okay how can I ensure that every run has latest lookup data while processing my MapReduce program. So this is what my question is. So there is some lookup data that is going to be changed every day and I have to ensure that my each run is able to process this new updated lookup data inner join between you need an inner join between subscribers table and DND table Rahul if you remember we don't have any tables right our Hadoop is a file system and DND table can be refreshed as and when required. So how does the table concepts come into picture here? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so fine. If at all if if that's not the case with Hadoop, what you are telling is correct. But how we want to include this in Hadoop? Uh, your functionality is fine that is good but how you want to include this functionality into Hadoop because Hadoop is a distributed file system okay so just think about this question and get back to me with your answers tomorrow and we will discuss much more about this topic tomorrow So you are or you all are aware of this question, right? You got or you understood this my question, right? So or any questions? Take the snapshot of the file lookup data. Good, good. Uh, think a bit more and get back to me. Okay. So no hurries or no worries at all. So take some time. Okay, I mean whatever you are thinking the functionality wise that is okay but how you want to include it in Hadoop just think in that way when the ideas what you are getting are fine well and good so Arjun is very much nearer also
so but just think like how will you include this into our programs <laughs> Uh, Arjun, uh, speaking frankly, you are very, very near to the answer. Okay, take the snapshot of the file. So, let me paste this answer. So he is very near, but the only thing is he has to get the exact name. That's it. And just a small functionality. That's it. So is it fine guys? Just have a think also. And I tell you that you guys are really doing a good job. So no worries. So if anyone is going or looking for a Hadoop job, I am sure that you are going to get it. <laughs> I mean that is what I see as per your current standards. Okay fine guys. All good. Shall we wind up for today? or any questions do I have okay good thank you Nisha yeah same time tomorrow Rahul 9.30 okay Fine guys, thank you. Have a good night. Bye all. H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.